And now it's time to get to your questions. So many of them coming from Facebook and Twitter and you're texting us. Please keep those coming. Dr. Tom Hopkins is here with us uh, to answer those questions live. Uh, so really the first one is, what's the difference between the flu and the coronavirus? First off, there could be some overlap between those symptoms. But when we're talking about COVID-19 or coronavirus mm -hmm. uh, infection, it's fever, the cough, the shortness of breath. It's a respiratory disorder, primarily. When you think about the flu, it can be things that start off like a common cold. Right. It could be fevers, but headaches, body aches are more intense, and less of the respiratory symptoms. So we really focus on the respiratory symptoms as the difference. And if you have mild symptoms, if yeah. you start to feel that shortness of breath, yeah. uh, maybe you don't have a fever, but you yeah. know you may have an indication this is happening, where can you get tested? Can you go to a doctor's office? Well, first of all, everyone doesn't need to be tested. Right. If you have mild symptoms, you know, fever, a cough, that may be cold symptoms, just stay home. Take over-the-counter medications as you need to. Testing is really going to be reserved for those folks who have had exposure to someone with COVID-19, they've been in an area that was high risk, or they have se severe symptoms, more dramatic symptoms, then they need to call their doctor and they'd be directed to what their doctor tells them or public health officials. Absolutely, and I know some people are wondering too, this one's from yeah. Facebook, can you carry it and not show any symptoms? Well, you know, it's very rare that people will have, be asymptomatic and actually have it, but we know, we, there's a lot we don't know. Yeah. But probably so when you think about the incubation period, there's, there could be people that are wandering around, they have it, they don't know it, they don't have any symptoms, and they're placing their loved ones at risk. Yeah. So that's why we really have to have individual responsibility of helping to mitigate the spread. And that's why you're seeing all this social distancing really happening now. It really does affect yeah. that curve of cases. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Hopkins. We appreciate your time. All right, and joining us now is Lori Levy with the Employment Development Department. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of people want to know what's going to happen with their paychecks now that there are big changes to a lot of different industries. Well, you know, we want Californians to know that there are benefit programs out there designed to help replace wages that people may be losing. You know, that they've had their job, they that can't go to work, they've had their hours reduced through no fault of their own. There are some benefit payments that can kind of help provide some of that financial support. All right, so let's take some questions that we just got from Facebook. This person says, I applied for uninsur unemployment insurance, but didn't receive a confirmation email. Did something go wrong? And should I have gotten an email upon completion of applying? Well, did you, hopefully the person went through our UI online system and you should be able to get a confirmation number through that. We do encourage people as often as possible to go online. That's the fastest way to get service. And typically we're, we've brought on all kinds of assistance to help us with the claim load that has indeed spiked with this particular situation. But definitely hang in there. You should get some kind of confirmation and we'll take a couple of weeks to process that benefit payment if someone's found eligible. Okay, and not everybody has the same kind of employment status. So this question from Facebook, can someone who is self-employed get unemployment insurance? Well, that's a good question. These are insurance programs. So somebody had to have paid into them on your behalf, whether that was an employer or yourself, there are some self-coverage options. But you know, it's quite possible that maybe you had a job prior to in the last 12 to 18 months, for example, or that um, you know you may have been misclassified as a worker when it, you know as an independent contractor, and you should have been a worker. So for those reasons, we do encourage people to apply for benefits, and we'll go ahead and look at that eligibility and work with the claimant on that. All right. So at least apply. We'll apply see what goes from there, and we'll work with you. Thanks, Lori.